You mentioned some of China's socioeconomic, environmental, and governance issues. Could you explain a bit of what the effects will be on China's foreign policy? I think it has a few effects. One is that for a rising power, an aspiring great power, even a superpower, uh, China is relatively poor. That is inequality amid poverty. Uh, and it will have to divert a fair amount of the limited resources that it has to dealing with the consequences of inequality and the side effects of rapid growth, environmental problems, uh, corruption problems that have grown up in government, uh, things of that ilk. So there are a lot of claims on a limited pool of resources. And that will limit what China can do and will limit its influences, although China has priorities that it can divert resources, or commit resources to in, in foreign policy. Uh, secondly, China is going to face a situation where nationalism may be an alternative to performance-based legitimacy, and nationalism uh, carries most strongly within China among people who are not so well off. So in a sense, inequality creates a stronger basis for nationalism. I think inequality also cuts against democracy and democratization uh, in China. Uh, the sense that poor Chinese are not ready for it is something you hear from many Chinese, and the urban, educated, affluent elites have done very well under an authoritarian system and might not welcome the policy preferences of the vast majority of rural Chinese, so that, in a sense, their inequality undercuts a constituency uh, for democratization. Uh, finally, I think what it means most importantly is that China's foreign policy will remain focused on creating an environment that is good for China's economic development. That means engagement with the outside world. That's good news. Uh, the bad news for the US is it also means points of friction on matters such as currency issues, trade balances, and competition for natural resources such as oil.